if we continue, we look at um, the definition of strong acids and weak acids and the difference between a concentrated acid and a dilute acid. And the same concept will apply to bases as well. A strong acid is a, an acid that completely dissolves in water. It completely ionizes in water. So a good example would be sul a sulfuric acid, hydrochloric acid, etc. We notice that these acids, when they uh, dissolve in water, they the, the ionize uh, uh, almost, or we can say, we, we can assume that they ionize 100%. Whereas if you look at a weak acid, for example, ethanoic acid or acetic acid, which we call vinegar early, uh, which you know is found in vinegar, a weak acid does not ionize completely in water. It, uh, in fact, uh, vinegar ionizes very slightly in water. So we see that that is a weak acid. So a strong acid ionizes completely, whereas a weak acid ionizes slightly in water. Now, if you look at a concentrated acid and a dilute acid, a concentrated acid has a, a high amount of acid in a small amount of water. So that means that there are lots of acid in a, a little bit of water. So a concentrated acid, we can have uh, a concentrated sulfuric acid solution where there is a lot of sulfuric acid in, uh, in terms of uh, ratio to water. But we can also get a concentrated weak acid like ethanoic acid where there is uh, a large amount, a large ratio of uh, weak acid, which is ethanoic acid, in a small amount of water. So a concentrated acid has a high amount of solute in the solvent, and a dilute acid has a low amount of acid in a large amount of water. Or we can say that the ratio to, uh, from acid to water uh, is low, very low. And the same principle applies to bases as well. Now then we will look at an ampholite. An ampholite is a substance that can act as an acid or a base. Now previously we looked at uh, conjugate acid-base pairs and we will just go back there where if you look at uh, ionization reactions, we see here that if you look at H2O in the first example, the H2O was a conjugate base of uh, oxonium ion as H3O plus. So in the first reaction, H2O acted as a base. Whereas if you look at the second reaction, we see that H2O was the conjugate acid to OH minus the hydroxide ions. So in the second example, we see that water acts as an acid. So here we see a, a very good example in water, where water in one reaction can act as a base and in another reaction can act as an acid. So we, we, we say that water is amphipro, amphiprotic or it's an ampholite. So we can see that H2O, uh, H2O can act as an acid or a base. So if we have H3O plus as your acid, then H2O will be your base. And if we have OH as your base, then H2O will, will be your acid. Similarly, if you look at HSO4 minus, the conjugate acid, will be H2SO4. So if H2SO4 is your acid, then HSO4 minus will be your conjugate base. And if we have SO4 2 minus as your conjugate base, then HSO4 minus will be your acid. Now, if you look at the third example, uh, we got uh, HCO3 minus. So the conjugate acid of HCO3 minus, if you look at the pattern here, we can deduce that if, um, we have a conjugate acid, then the acid has an extra H plus ion. So HCO3 minus plus an H plus ion will give you H2CO3. So if, if H2CO3 is your conjugate acid, then HCO3 minus will be your conjugate base. So in that case, HCO3 minus X is a base. But if we have a conjugate base here, then we'll see that the conjugate base is short of an H plus ion. So if we take H plus away from here, we end up with CO3 2 minus. So if CO3 2 minus is your conjugate base, then HCO3 minus will be your acid. So here's a here look at the example that we have here. Write equation to prove that HCO3 minus is an ampholite. 
if you look at this example if you get HCO3 minus plus H2O, you can get H3O plus plus CO3 2 minus. So let's just write this down nicely. So in this case, if you look at um, uh, HCO3 and CO3 2 minus, the HCO3 donates an H plus, so it's your acid, acid 1. Or we, if we compare the two, the HCO3 minus and the CO3 2 minus, we see that HCO3 minus has an extra H, so that's your acid 1, and this will be your base 1. And if you look at H2 and H3O+, plus, then your acid will be acid 2, the oxonium ion, or the hydronium ion will be your acid, and your H2O+, plus will be your base 2. So here in this case, we see that HCO3 minus acts as an acid because it donates the H plus to the H2O to give it, make it H3O+. Plus. And if, we, if it acts as a base, what will, what will the reaction be? So in this case here, if you look at HCl, it's your acid. And we know that HCl is an acid. So we don't even have to look at, uh, realize if it's a conjugate acid or a conjugate base because HCl is your acid. And if you compare HCl on the other side where it becomes Cl minus, it has uh, Cl minus is short of an uh, H plus. So this will be your base one. And then if you look at HCO3 minus and H2CO3, we see that H2CO3 is the extra H, so it's your acid 2. And here, the HCO3 will be your base 2. And as we explained earlier, the HCl donates the H plus to the H3, HCO3 minus. So the HCl ends up becoming Cl minus, and the HCO3 minus becomes H2CO3. So here we see that in the first example, that HCO3 minus acted as an acid and in the second case we see that HCO3 minus acted as a base. So that's where we will stop today.